This is the Bonus Section Podcast, episode number 68. Discipline is not inherited. Are you the type of person that knows you were meant for something greater in this lifetime and that somewhere inside of you, there's just this bigger version of yourself trying to break through, but in spite of all your self-development, you just can't seem to find the way up there. Well then, hey, you are definitely in the right place. I'm Danny Griffin, the founder of The Bonus Section and the host of this podcast and a person just like you trying to learn how to live the most fulfilling life possible. Now, to help you take immediate action to get started or moving in a better direction, we take all the notes from each episode and we post them for a short period of time over at freethinkingtools.com. That's freethinkingtools.com. We just give you a couple of episodes worth of notes so that you can see the subject and you can sit down and start the process of thinking your way to a better plan for success in your life to really help you get the thing that you really want. Don't live that unfulfilled life. That's our key mission here. All right, in this episode, discipline is not inherited. Okay, <clears throat> key point here. First, whether your parents, okay, your parents, your mentors, whomever, or your grandparents, whomever, your parents, whether they have discipline or not, is irrelevant to yours. Let's just get that on the table. This isn't some gene code right? This is in some predisposition to be this thing or that thing. And plus, I think that's highly overrated myself. I mean, I just believe so much that I, I know too many people. I've overcome my own obstacles. It, just too many people that have been successful in spite of the characteristics or the character that their parents, grandparents, mentors, anybody that raised them. It's just irrelevant, a lot of this is really up to you. It's a decision that you make to, to be disciplined, to get those things that you want. So we get that on the table first. Now, the, that really begs the question then, and, and this is something I heard. By the way, I was provoked by this. I listen all the time to self-development concepts, ideas, even when I'm in the gym. It's not just a workout that I follow this system. I have a food system. It's also a learning system that I have certain subjects that I want to learn about. So I will listen to really smart people and teachers. I mean, one of my favorites is Jim Rohn. I mean, he's just one of the best success teachers ever, ever. He's dead now, but my gosh, what, what a brilliant man. He birthed Tony Robbins. I mean, he's just a really, really bright guy. And so oftentimes, amongst other speakers, I will listen to that in the gym with a little background um, noise. Uh, meaning music. And so it's really motivational to hear these ideas with music while you're, you're working out because it really gets into my, my, my psyche, my subconscious. And this whole idea of discipline that er, there I am thinking to myself, how did I get this discipline? Right? What am I doing? I mean, I've been following a program for, for workout um, since, oh gosh, I've lost count, maybe 15 years now, maybe even 20. It's been some time since I read a book called Body for Life because I was looking for a system and they had one in there. Now, I've slightly tweaked it, but not by much. And so I'm in there every, every moment that I can be, literally. I mean, unless I'm really super tired, I always listen to myself about sleep and I'll relax, but, but, or I'm traveling and I just can't get to a gym. There's not a gym there, but I will always go right back to this disciplined workout. And so I was thinking to myself, how? How do I share this with somebody else? Why doesn't this happen? And as a longtime coach and guide, uh, I realized that the discipline is not possible unless it involves really like a life or death situation or something you love. So let's think about it. Would you have the discipline to stop eating a certain food if somebody said to you, you're going to die if you keep eating that certain food. And I, I, I think of that um, documentary, Super Size Me. Go watch it. I mean, the guy, the, 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 the star of the film and who's also the producer of the film, he goes on a, a McDonald's diet. I'm not here to knock McDonald's, but I'm just saying. He goes on a McDonald's diet and that's all he eats for all his meals for 30 days. And the doctors that are monitoring the change in his health, it's stunning right? It's a, it's a stunning thing. So it's a life or death suggestion to him. Say, this could really do, they're saying to him in the, in the film, this could do some permanent damage. You need to stop doing this. This isn't good for you. So with life or death, 
knocking at the door like that because you're you're doing certain things in an undisciplined manner. You're not eating healthy. Look at again. I, I'm not going to go down the path of food. It's a big deal to me, right? And I'm going to get all passionate about that, and I want to take a hard right turn. But the discipline to eat foods that are healthy for the body and brain, especially, versus not. That's a discipline. That's a choice. But in this case, it came to the doctors were generally, right, and genuinely scared for this person's life or potential death or just long-term damage that could lead to death. Or let's go to the positive side of this. As I said, discipline's not possible unless it involves life or death, like I just gave you an example. Go watch it for yourself. Or better, something you love. If you really, really love something, and that's what I talk about in the opening of this this passion podcast, as I like to refer to it, there's that North Star that you all have. And it's right there. And I just had a conversation with a good friend of mine long term, and she's struggling through some stuff. And so a cup of coffee, went into some provocative conversations. And I was trying to find that same thing that I find with all my kids. What's that thing? If you go do one thing the rest of your life, what would it be? I pestered my kids. And I asked that same question and all of a sudden, boom, it was like I had plugged in the lights to a Christmas tree and all the lights came on and boom, the answer was right there. And the whole physical change in that person was stunning. I mean, stunning in a positive way. I'm not surprised by it because I've asked it and it's almost once you have somebody say, what do you love? If nothing else matters, stop thinking about the money and whether you have to go through a licensure, whether you have to do this or that, doesn't matter. Don't go through all that process. Just say, what do I love to do? Because the minute you begin to love to do something in your head and then you give yourself permission to do it, Watch how the discipline starts to come round, right? Watch this. So point number three is your love for that thing will actually drive you in a direction of learning, okay? Of learning. But the caveat there is, okay, you don't just say, okay, I love this thing. I get what he's saying. I'm online tonight, all night. I stayed up till four in the morning and I started to learn about it. I started to learn who else has done it. Do I need a license? Do I need to move? What kind of jobs exist? Okay, breathe because that'll happen. The minute you give yourself permission to pursue something that you love, I'm not saying quit your day job. I have an actress daughter who's not going to quit her, her job da- down at the, you know, the, the local German restaurant in LA, but she did just get a commitment from an agency to sign her. That was pretty good. So things have been moving in this passionate direction and things look good, but we don't sit there and abandon plan A, which is to put food on the table. So I'm not suggesting that anybody gets into this and all of a sudden all the answers are there and we throw reckless abandon at it. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that your love and your permission to accept that you love that thing, regardless of what anybody else says, oh, we have enough lawyers, oh, we have enough this, so we have enough that. If that's the thing that you want, we don't have enough passionate lawyers. We don't have enough passionate doctors. We don't have enough passionate actors, actresses, sport, um, uh, pro athletes. We don't have enough of great people doing anything. So there's always that opportunity for you to be the next great passionate anything. Don't let anybody talk you off the thing you love. Because if it's not something you love, this is what I'm saying. This is where the discipline is already in trouble. You're already in trouble, right? If you hate what you do and you're living a miserable life, do you think that is the precursor to discipline? I don't think so. Not in my experience personally and coaching thousands and thousands of people for thousands and thousands of hours. It's just not my experience how this works. But I want to say in this third point here, your love will drive you in a direction of learning, and that's great. Go for it. I mean, man, pick up your phone. That little white box to search in is mind-bogglingly exciting. You can get access. 
By the way, I was helping this person. I rattled off three books. I sent them via my phone. I looked up. I was curious for that job. I looked it up and there was a huge list of potential job openings. One place we had talked about, I forwarded her the job offer. And all of a sudden, like within five minutes, because the love was named, it was put out in the North, you know, the, the North Star was hung per se. And all of a sudden, the learning was in that direction. However, caveat. Moving now in that direction will come with failing. Just because you love it, it does not mean you won't run into closed doors. And you fall down and trip. Somebody will talk you off. Worse, you will snap back and say, oh, this was just a dream. You'll snap back like Maxwell Maltz talks about in Psycho-Cybernetics, Mind Steering Systems. All of that still comes. But if you keep that light shining brightly and you know the way to do that, get it out of your head. Take it through your arm. Take it through a pen or a pencil. I have a yellow pad here with a pen right next to me. I always am there to catch fireflies. And the biggest firefly is that big North Star, that thing that you love, right? That's the thing. You want to get that out there and you want to put that there and really keep it there. Now, if you've been honest with yourself, it's the one thing that you really love to think about at least, to study, to toy with, it's a passion, and you like it, and you were meant to do it, by the way. It's pre-wired way back before you were here. That's my belief. So when you look at that, you keep that up there, but remember, like Maltz also teaches in Psycho-Cybernetics, you are now beginning to program the mind steering system to go and get that thing. So I learned that I need this license. I sign up for this course. Unfortunately, it doesn't start till this month. Okay, I don't know. I have a conflict here. You see, the wind is blowing against the, the, the drive. It's us. We're that guided missile moving towards that North Star, that big bright light, that thing that we want. And the discipline that we need to get it is going to be challenged right even in the initial, the initial research that you're doing because of all these limitations on your ability to get prepared to do it. So the wind's blowing, and like Malt says, the guided missile, it looks so easy, doesn't it? We hung that thing right there. Well, what's so hard? I'll just learn this, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Unfortunately, by the time you get to A, <laughs> the wind starts blowing, and all of a sudden, well, B looks further away. Ah, I get over to B. No, I thought that was B. It's not. That's the wrong letter. I went too far. Let me, but you get the point. You get blown off course. You fail. And this is the moment where discipline is learned, right? Discipline is learned in that moment. How badly do you want it? Are you ready just because you're failing on the way to get this thing? Are you that willing to talk yourself off of it because the wind blew a little bit and spit in your face? You want to go back where you were? Where you weren't pursuing something you, you loved? And living an undisciplined life? See, discipline to get what you love is a beautiful lifestyle. I love getting up every morning, getting to the gym. I love eating these foods. I love coaching. I love these things and they're all organized and disciplined. As I record these podcasts, I have to come into my basement studio in the middle of Saturday, Sunday, wherever, after all of the, the work that I have to do and the kids and everything, and I do it. It's disciplined because I love it. And I know you're out there. I know I can see you somewhere out there. I know you're out there and this is landing with you. You're the one. You're the one. So my love for this stuff is really of service too. So this beautiful bright light is because it's not just me selfishly. If I move in that direction, I can help more people. And I'll guarantee you this almost in everything, there's something for others in it. That by you pursuing it and getting the discipline to go there, if you can understand that that's making someone else happy, it might be family members who have been like, oh, I wish she would, I wish he would. And all of a sudden you start to do it. I know you're doing it for yourself because you love it and the discipline is getting you, but you don't even know sometimes the positive effect you're having on people watching you. In fact, I have a very dear client, friend, 
all my clients are friends at this point, right? My coaching clients in the real estate world have a small intimate group that I can handle at any one point in time and they're client friends. So I oftentimes get involved much deeper than, than their real estate business. And everything's personal. Every, everything's human at the end of the day. I don't care how many machine tools and learning we have. There's a human behind it somewhere. And humans have emotions and humans break down and they snap back. So I have one guy who has pulled himself up out of the ashes, right? And as he's doing it, it takes discipline and he has it because the thing that he wants, that place that he wants to be, that person he wants to be, is, he, he loves that. He loves that vision and that version of himself. And then he reached out to me the other day and said, hey, do you have a lot of people when they watch your stuff and your postings, do you have a lot of people reach out to you? And I said, yeah, I have for years. All sorts, you know, parents of kids who said, hey, this was great. You really affected my kid by putting this up there. Or, hey, this really meant something to me. Sure. But that's normal for a coach to feel. Why? What's up? And he said, you know, I've been posting my journey and, and people are all over me asking questions. I said, ah, now you're talking. Now you're talking. By being humble, by pursuing who you want to be and what that looks like, you have magnetically attracted people who say, can you just tell me how to do that for myself? And that's, my friends, the highest calling, the reason for this podcast, to be a person for others, right? So when you're failing to go to that place, it's so much easier to stay disciplined because the alternative is ugly. So yes, that's a tough spot to get it kick-started. But I am telling you, once you really get it started, then it starts to turn into a habit. So the last point here is, if you accept trials and tribulations, so if you accept these course corrections as unavoidable, right? Unavoidable. Your character will begin to build and discipline will follow. Let me explain that a little bit more. So I remember when I felt things were tough in business, and they're always tough. I mean, as an entrepreneur, it's basically like you're taking a stick and you're rubbing it into something in the ground, hoping a spark starts and a fire starts and you have to keep doing it, keep doing it. The wind blows it out. You know, there's not enough this, there's not enough that. Everything feels scarce when you're, when you're, when you're doing your thing. And that doesn't matter whether you're working in a company, trying to climb the ladder, be an entrepreneur, be a professional, whatever. It doesn't matter, right? All this stuff is difficult. So ultimately, I just began to accept and almost started to look for the trials and tribula tribulations that were coming. Maxwell Maltz's book was amazingly transformational in my life. You can, there's two versions. The oldest one is Psycho Cybernetics. And then Dan Kennedy, a mentor to a mentor of mine, he bought the rights to it and it's called The New Psycho Cybernetics. So Dan tells his story and how it affected him. So either one of those versions, because that's where I learned that the wind is going to blow and I shouldn't take it so personally. I shouldn't feel so crazy. Like, ah, I'm a, my inner baby throws a tantrum and it's not going so easily, right? So once I started to realize, okay, every day I wake up, something's not going to work. What I thought would be isn't going to be. So how do I react? In fact, then I got progressively aggressive in looking for it. I almost went out looking for what was wrong today as a game, as a positive, because I still want to get there. So what's in my way today? What's in my way today? And of course, I get blindsided by some surprise, but, but I'm not so surprised anymore. Follow me? Because I'm open to this. I recognize something's going to come out of left field per se. Something's going to be a trial and tribulation. And I relish the opportunity to go in there and be a problem solver. And the faster that I can solve them, the better I can get. Well, what that has done is build a stronger character. I am a stronger character. I'm a more humble but stronger character, not being arrogant or insecure enough to think that everything's going to be easy or that I ever get there. There's always this sense that, well, I've, I've put in a year. I've put in six months. I, I've had so many coaching clients over the year. Well, you know, yeah, you know, I'm a, I take a break. You know, I, I put in a year and it's not working for me. <laughs> oh, you fools. A year. 
to do what? I can't even remember some of the years in my life. It took me so much trial and tribulation to 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 become a great father of all these kids I have, and, and then to become this you know entrepreneur who still doesn't feel quite as successful as he wants to be, and he keeps moving there. Well, it's a process. There's no start and finish. It's to the end. Take me to the end. I'm going to play this game to the end. I don't even know what they're talking about. That's character. That's character. But that, that North Star has to stay out there. Now, sometimes the North Star changes, right? Sometimes it might, it, it might be being a person for others in a context, and then that context changes, but that core is still important to me, right? So that character builds, and then I'm just disciplined. Because what's interesting about discipline, too, as I said to you, and I'll finish this way, I found formulas to be disciplined. So when food became a critical part of my life and I understood its implications for my ability to have the energy to do all these great things, I got very serious about it. And I, and I stayed formulaic in it. And I'm the cook and I love to cook and I love to put different flavors on certain things and really mess with it. I'm not like, you know, some boring regimented person when it comes to food. I just know what core foods have to be there. I know what supplements and, and, and I know sleep as a system too. So I look at food and sleep as a sort of a coexisting system. And then I told you about the workout system and then everything in business follows an extremely similar system. That's how I maintain discipline a lot, a, along a broad array of my passions and my interests. And that's how I'm able to do so much is because everything is disciplined and then turned into a system. And if I don't love a thing or I'm not passionate about a thing, I'm not going to apply discipline to it and systems. See, that was the key point here. You got to love it or you can't build that character which leads to that discipline, which can be enhanced by systems. Let me summarize these points here, okay? Discipline's not inherited. The first point was whether your parents have discipline or not, that's just irrelevant. Second point, discipline is not possible unless it involves life or death, right? You can get pretty disciplined quickly if you're in a life or death situation, or more importantly and positively, unless it involves something you love. You can really develop discipline when you're pursuing something you love. The third point, your love will drive you in a direction of learning. But that learning still comes with failing. Learning and doing, I should say. And it still comes with failing. Fourth, if you accept trials and tribulations as unavoidable, right? Forever. Then your character will begin to build as you accept that as the human condition. And it will easily birth your discipline. I'll summarize it by saying discipline can feel so elusive. When we can't seem to keep ourselves disciplined and we fail, we often look for something or someone to blame, especially our parents or family. We want to blame them as if they birthed it into us. However, discipline to succeed especially is not inherited. So we must instead figure out how to grow our own discipline. I believe this starts with falling in love with something that you really want to achieve almost so badly that it feels similar to a life or death situation. If I don't get this thing, when we do, we then must accept that in spite of that self-disciplined effort, we will fail along that way and must accept that, that failure as a never ending part of the journey. That will help us build the character upon which long-term discipline will grow. Okay, remember, you can take immediate action to get started in moving in the right direction towards your goals because we take all the notes from each episode and we post them at freethinkingtools.com. Freethinkingtools.com, just the way it sounds. And we give you instant access to the couple of those episodes. You can sit down and start thinking. Also, don't forget, you can subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen. And any of our social media channels, just go find the bonus section. We post them there too. And that way you won't miss out on the episodes. We also appreciate it if you join our mission. We said this, I said this earlier today, in becoming people for others. Please try to do it for other people too. And share that content with people just like you so they get the help that they need. But remember this, I sign off the same way in the bonus section and all my podcasts the same way every time. Nobody's coming for you. Nobody. So go get to work on yourself and a better plan for your goals. 
And we'll see you in the next episode to try and help you do just that. Thanks again.